Anyway, hi guys, how you all doing? I literally just flew from Muscat to be here for you guys today, so thank you for having me. Uh, okay, so I want to start off by asking you all a question. Um, do you guys have a hard time being true to yourself? Think about that for a minute and we will revisit this. So, over the years, I've had a very hard time being myself. To answer you, the question myself, it would be a big yes. Because, first of all, I'm not your conventional Muslim woman. Second of all, growing up, I didn't go through anything that was conventional. Came from a divorced family, you know, multicultural, lived in a different country than I was born in. So all of these aspects kind of set me apart from the groups that I would usually see. My name is Leila al Siabi, and today I would like to talk to you guys about being beyond labels. So let me take you guys back to where I really felt very vulnerable and very afraid of being myself. It was the time when I first gave birth to my firstborn child. I was 20 years old, and we had other plans, me and my husband. We said we'd travel together, we'd do things together before we really settled down with a kid. But, you know, that was not the case. And um, so we had this baby, and the first time I looked at her, I know they say you feel, you feel this ecstatic feeling when you look at your child, and you feel overwhelmed, and they show you in movies, it's like a dream come true, but it was nothing like that for me. It was nothing like that for me. When I looked at her, <laughs> there I was, a 20-year-old young woman, looking down at this baby, looking up at me, crying, and I was like, what did I just get myself into? Am I going to be a good mother? How am I going to balance out, you know, having a, am I even going to have a career? Forget, you know, finishing my education. I had all these dreams for myself, which I felt like they were crumbling because I just had this card dealt in my life that I had no clue of. So a couple of months went by. I settled into being a mom with the help of my family, of course, and my husband. Um, I was still searching for answers. I was still looking around. I was still thinking, okay, I need to get my education done while I have this baby at home. Of course, I didn't go the conventional way and go to university with my friends. They were having so much fun. I would see it on Facebook and I would be like, oh my God, are you serious? You went partying here and then you went traveling there. And there I was, you know, at home with a baby and I was feeling terrible. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't know at all if I'm still the Leila that was in, uh, before my 20s or what is happening to me right now, you know? So it took me a while to figure out all these questions I had. But one day, I just stopped scrolling through Facebook, which is so bad for your health, you know, when you're going through things and you're looking at other people and other people's timelines. I said, I'm not gonna do this to myself. I'm gonna, you know, stop asking myself all these questions and start doing things before it's too late. So I went on to get my business and marketing degree with a baby, which was really, really hard. I stayed awake at night, you know, doing my work, my essay, while in the morning I had to wake up with the baby, you know, as my alarm clock. And four years went on, I got my BBA, BBA, and then I finally decided that I should look into doing other things because the corporate world wasn't really fitting into my picture with you know, the mom life, and I wasn't really keeping up with all the timings, and I had a hard time finding a maid. So I was like, I'm just going to try to do things my way, because I've been doing that for the past four years of my life, and it, it has been working out great. So I decided I'm going to try out my love for photography. I'm going to touch base with makeup, because I love doing all of these things before I had the baby. So let's get back into the game, you know? And then finally, I decided to come across fashion where I did some courses on fashion design 
And then I went on ahead and started styling people, my friends, my cousins, and people liked it. The women loved it because I wasn't dressing the conventional women or the models, you know, I was dressing everyday women that are like me, you know. We're not a size zero, we're not tall, we're not blonde, and we're just everyday women with the hijab, and it was going pretty well. So I said, you know what, it's about time I take it to the next level. And I looked into opening my own styling studio, but things weren't looking very great with having a baby and still no proper help and being here, you know, with no extended family. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna do something from home. So I started doing things from home, which worked out in my favor because most of my friends would be comfortable coming over and I would start styling them. A couple of years went on, and I started feeling pressured in the fashion industry. I looked around, even though this is in Doha, but we have like a lot of cattiness going on in the fashion industry. It's just like anywhere else. I looked around, and I felt completely odd. I felt different, and I said, you know what? And there was always a competition between you know, people and uh, the models, and they always want to push people off even as an adult, they want to push people off that are different so that the more, um, what do you say, the more generic version of uh, the industry can go on. So that is when I looked deep into myself and I said, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to put myself on a broader platform where I can connect with women just like myself. I'm pretty sure that there are many, many women like myself that I can um, reach out to. So I decided to put myself online, and that is when I started my uh, platform, Being Leila A. It is completely about being true to myself and uh, talking about fashion, beauty, lifestyle, along with the realness that comes being a mom and being an entrepreneur. It's not all happy golden days. There are days that I'm terrible, terribly off of plan, like today. I missed my flight because my son in the morning had a really bad tummy ache and he was vomiting and I said, you know what, I can't go like this without knowing he's going to be okay. So I had to push my flight and then come here and I informed them that I cannot go on for the first bit. So you see, I kind of kept customizing my life until I'm here today. and. Um, of course, along the way, I realized my daughter was the best thing that ever happened to me because she made me see life. <laughs> she made me see life in a completely different way. She gave me a second chance to finding this Layla in front of you today. If I denied myself the right to feel vulnerable, feel pressured, or f answer, ask those questions, then I wouldn't be here in front of you today. My advice to anyone that feels like they're out of the box, I would say being yourself doesn't mean you can just do one thing, you know? It means being different and being, sticking to the decisions you make. So if you're on a journey on finding yourself, let me just tell you, it's not going to ha happen over an overnight. It's not going to happen maybe even in a year. But the key is, major key alert, the key is to stay true to yourself and stick to those decisions because eventually you're going to practice and you're going to make it through and you're going to have a habit of not giving a damn about what people say in the process. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to um, change my slides. But I think I'm not gonna go with the slides now, so halas. <laughs> um, okay, so the other thing about finding yourself in this world is also the fact that you always have to have a vision for yourself, set goals for yourself and stick to them. Don't let anything or anyone push you aside. You can always fall off the wagon, but then you can always get back on because there are circumstances that you cannot, um, you, you cannot, uh, you know, that's beyond your control, you know? There are higher powers out there, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta be aware of that. Just always make plan A, B, C, D, E, F, go up, up until Z if you have to, and um, that's going to help you through your journey. 
And some of the questions that I asked myself when I got started was, am I being true to myself? Being yourself doesn't mean that everybody hears the term be yourself these days, but what does it really mean to be yourself in this day and age? I don't think there is one way to do it. And also the way to look at it is to say being true to yourself because each time you go through this journey, you're just going to be put against decisions that are going to be either you're comfortable with or uncomfortable with. If you decide to take the comfortable comfortable bit, then know that it's not going to be easy. You're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to feel out of the box. You're going to feel like people just don't get you. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, the price you pay is nothing compared to what you gain. And um, lastly, I would like to leave you with the questions that I asked myself when I got started. What am I doing to contribute to myself, my, the world around me? Am I being true to myself genuinely because of my happiness or is it to please others? Am I living my life to the full potential for myself and my family or is it for others? These are the, some of the questions that I asked when I got started and I would love for you guys to get started. It's important that you get started as soon as possible. Do not doubt yourself. Do not, you know, um, wait around for the right time. There are always going to be haters. You know, it comes with a big, big load where people don't understand you. They just don't get what you're doing. Some people are going to be against what you do, against what you say, but that doesn't mean you stop because of them. You keep on going. You um, build yourself up as you go along and you become brave. So that's about it. Thank you so much. <laughs>